there are many of us who are still worshiping an unknown God and while God has positioned us as men of God to help give perspective to your knowledge about God nothing will truly give you confidence until you are guided to know the character of God there are men that if they tell you anything about them the first thing you would be glad to say sorry later but you say I know this person forget it you are just talking nonsense hallelujah ah this man collected a bribe of five thousand this man that i know well we are all human but until proven otherwise i know this director he will not bribe do you know god enough to stand and and tell the dream that you saw that in that dream you saw everybody going down and a spirit appears and tells you god said you say ah, 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 hold on which god if it's another god that's fine but to me my altar is not to an unknown god my altar is to a loving god a compassionate and merciful god and he can arise as a warrior so when the devil comes to threaten you like 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 the the patriarchs of old you can arise the fullness of my days i will fulfill i lay me down and i slept for this same god sustained me hallelujah he upholds all things including the gates of the grave by the word of his power for i am a man under authority the centurion said i know the integrity of the roman government and on the strength of my consciousness of their power and their integrity i can say to one go and he goeth to another come and he cometh jesus i know you you are a man under authority and jesus said i've not found this kind of faith this orientation no not in israel can i tell you i used to live a life full of fear and uncertainties but something about the character of god gave me stability apostle what gives you hope that koinonia will remain serving the purposes of God and rising. If I tell you because I'm anointed, I gave you a foolish answer. That is too small an answer to sponsor longevity in a world that you do not know. I don't know the future, but there is something I know about God. Alpha, Omega, God, when he starts a thing, is able to finish number two there is something i know about god as revealed by the apostles he says listen carefully he says that i how did he put it now i'm persuaded huh help me with that scripture now my mind is trying to get the scripture yes that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day do you know yes thank you i know whom i have believed that's what the scripture i was looking for and i am persuaded it says faithful is he that calleth you who will also do it so when we start our building project no matter the millions of dollars faithful is he that call it who will do it you will watch with shock and with wonder as the faithful man arises why do i know that every day you will keep coming to be blessed as much as you know this platform remains do you know why because everything god gives endures ladies and gentlemen are you building your life on sand or are you building it on a rock I know that I am an eternal blessing why do I know that because God is not a man that he should lie and when he called Abraham Genesis chapter 12 2 and 3 he said I will bless them that bless you and curse him that cursed you and then he says thou shalt be a blessing and he says indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed Galatians 3 29 and if ye be Christ then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise everything he told Abraham routed to Christ Christ is my reality today so I am a blessing I cannot be a curse any nation and any place he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord every time I step into a nation I step in with a spiritual shout of Hosanna It's always a triumphant entry because it is blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord your spiritual life will change when you understand this hallelujah my life changed when I understood the character of God. Another revelation about God, that he's a lifter of men. Ayah. If you ever doubt him, look at the person speaking to you. How dare you say God does not lift? God is a lifter of men. Like he's lifting you now. I said like he's lifting you now. It 
doesn't matter who believes it or who does not believe it. That is none of your business. Like he's lifting you now. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is something about God that I know. There is something about the lifter that I know. My family may be the lowest, but I know something about God. I am not serving an unknown God. My altar, my devotion is not to an unknown God. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Hallelujah. Hear me. When Nase has come to you and say you've been serving God for 20 years, what is the benefit? God rewards, he does not pay salary. It's salary that is monthly. God's reward may look like it's not coming, but in one day, after 20 years, even if you are Abraham, it may take 25 years, but ladies and gentlemen, when the rewarder comes, he will come with his reward and his benefits and make your life a praise to the nation. Hallelujah. For many years we served God and gave him everything and there was no comeliness and nothing in our lives that looked like God rewards but something about his character. For someone you have been praying and fasting and pressing in life and ministry because God said he's giving you the mantle and the mandate of a deliverer. Do not allow ignorant person confuse you about this God you are serving. The rewarder is on his way to you. Yours is to be diligent. Others were bribing in the office and you refused to bribe. Now you are feeling stupid because you would have lived in a duplex by now. You would have had cars if only you cut corner. I'm taking away the haziness from this God. He is not an unknown God. He can be known using the vista of his character. You can know God by knowing his character. It is true that God destroys, but who does he destroy? Let me tell you three categories of people in the Bible that God destroys. Number one, enemies. And when God destroys enemies, it's not just something that happens. Enemies there, let me define for you who God's enemies are. This is not my discussion, but I want you to know. <laughs> God's enemy is not just the person who fights you. God's enemy is anybody who perpetually interrupts the manifestation of his will. God's definition of an enemy is not based on sentiments or biases. You can become God's enemy if you consistently become an interruption to his will. If he loves you because he's your, you're his child, he may not judge you in terms of throwing you, but you will be edged out of the position that creates that interruption by giving your bishopric to another. This is how God works. I taught you this already, our last discussion. Are we together now? Yes. So when you say arise and let your enemies be scattered, make sure you are not part of them first. That's why the Bible talks about righteousness who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord. Don't just pray blindly and be a victim of your prayer. You see that there's a lot of prayerfulness but in ignorance. Many people pray and miss. You think just because you hate a man, God hates the man. You can be saying, oh God, kill that director for me now. Help me and kill this man. And God is saying, no. Even though he's not my son, he's a Cyrus that I've ordained. And for as long as this system works, it is in honor to them that you will rise. There are Cyruses who, although they are not in Christ, they have, through the sincerity of their heart, aligned strategically to God's program. He will not take them out. He will leave them there. Their relevance is too important. This is a mystery. In God's end time program, you will see many people who are not of the faith playing sensitive roles. Because the most important thing, listen, when he appeared unto Joshua, do you not read your Bible? He said, are you for us or against us? What was the answer? He said, neither. No, this is not how I walk. I am for anything that is pro my will. So he said, who is on the Lord's side? Get my message, who is on the Lord's side? You have to, before you invoke God's judgment, verify your position. Many believers have become casualties of careless prophetic speakings. Lord, destroy anybody that stops your program. Destroy anybody and God is saying, I'm warning you, you don't know what you are doing. 
verify before Moses invoked judgment he said who is on the Lord's side let me give you a chance if you are for him and Elijah said if God be God this way if Baal, God will always give an opportunity for the will of man to willfully reject him before judgment is meted upon him are we together now we see his character in Nineveh again as as idolatrous and as stiff-necked and stubborn as they are he sent Jonah he loved Jonah but Jonah's life went down as a genuine prophet you don't have to be fake to destroy you just have to be out of the will of God many good people will be corruptors of God's program simply because they do not understand the power of alignment this is not about being real or fake this is about being if you are Jonah rejecting the call of God and running away you are putting Nineveh at ransom God wanted to met out judgment or otherwise because he sits on a throne that is made of righteousness and justice I hope you know that the very throne God sits on is an altar are we together and Jonah was delaying the manifestation he needed to give them a chance to choose him or otherwise and look what God the dealing that God had to go through with Jonah Jonah entered the belly of the fish caused people to lose until he repented realigned and the same instruction again and he went to Nineveh Jonah's refusal was because of something about God he knew he knew that God was merciful and he hoped that his delay will make God angry and punish because God does not forbear with iniquity indefinitely so he was running as a strategy that the evil will continue to rise as an indignation and God will be angry and punish them but God said Jonah go and the moment Jonah spoke to them the king said everyone beast and man declare a fast and Jonah was angry go and read your Bible the entire discussion was the anger of Jonah he said I know you this is what I, this is a, this is why I ran because I knew that if they now repent with all this wickedness they have done you will still forgive them do you know that about God if you know that about God you can still reach your unbelieving grandfather after doing witchcraft for 35 years you can still tell him before you pass on to glory let me give you a chance to love Jesus and he says you don't know how many people have killed he said it does not matter the moment you declare the Lordship of Jesus over your life the Bible says there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness hallelujah please be seated the character of God is someone learning explore the character of God as a preacher as a businessman as a family man and certain fears will die your confidence will be restored like that of uh, those who were in Bible days